In my backyard, in my new romper, I sit soaking up the sun on the armless lounge chair from Ikea. I'm not worried. I won't turn red. Next to the 100 arugula seedlings in my biodynamic garden, the chirping and buzzing is so loud. It disturbs my despair. In my backyard, I fight with the squirrels over the strawberries. I psych up my dog to go after them. I whisper, squirrel, squirrel, in a silly German accent. And she goes nutso, obediently charging after something. She's not sure what. But no one gets hurt in my backyard. A pair of doves visits. Only blossoms unfold in real time. In my backyard, so colorful, so white. My grandmother rests tranquilly inside, undisturbed by nighttime noises. In my backyard, sometimes I pull out my phone and nothing happens. Immigrants open shops, Sargon says. In countries where they take in refugees, that's what they do. They open shops. To sell something, there's no real need to speak. Someone enters, points at this and that, or finds what he wants on a shelf, and all you need is half a dozen words to serve him. Yes, no, seven euros, ten. He's counting fingers. Words a fool can master in a morning could be singing in two days, and maybe thank you and see you tomorrow. Immigrants, they open shops, Sargon says. Immigrants, open shops, Sargon says. A teenaged girl perched high on a stool, happy to try the few new words she's learned after her first week in the local school. But when they pass through the bead curtains into the back room, when they step back from the till, or when friends or family drop by for a taste of the old country, it's the old language still. A newspaper lying open on a table. The TV always on on the high shelf, making the drunk who stumbles in by accident wonder if he's the immigrant here himself.
Immigrants open shops, Sargon says. Eight years ago, already. Hard to believe. The troops back then, still gathering on the border of the homeland he hadn't seen in 20 years. One for the road, he asks. I shrug, why not? As my mother says, we'll be a long time dead. Sargon smiles. I'll remember that, my friend. But he's far away this evening, lost in himself, gazing out into our tidy garden through his pale reflection in the glass. A nervous shopkeeper, as night approaches, hearing ominous voices in the dark. I've got some of the highest grade shit. Come. Come over here. Seriously, it's some of the finest gear you'll find on the street. It's pure. Not cut. 100% neat. I'll do you a deal. I'll do it for cheap. You look like a discerning customer. Tell me, what is it you're after? I've got the stuff that will blow your mind. The trippy, psychedelic kind. It's called Allen Ginsberg. You take it by the line and I guarantee you a bloody good time. If you're bouncing off the walls and you feel you need a downer, or you're having issues with your father, a touch of Sylvia Plath under the tongue is the dose you're after. If you're the kind of person who likes to booze, a shot of Dylan Thomas is what you might choose. It will be like there are words dancing in your ear. Or perhaps you'd like a bit of Shakespeare? You can swallow one sonnet for that warm, loving feeling, or two for a bit of that midsummer night's dreaming. But don't take any more. The come down can be brutal. I knew this young couple that were left suicidal. And if you do feel like you're drowning, a huff of Stevie Smith will have you waving and back to raving. Now, don't be such a cliché, I don't have any molly. But I do have some holly, McNish. That will show you reality like it really is. And chances are you'll want to get naked. If you want to dance to the beat of a London street, try a bump of Kate Tempest. Sure, it might make you feel angry or stressed, but I promise you'll no longer feel repressed. Over here I've got some rupee core, if something a bit more instant is what you're looking for. Now this, this is some Oscar Wilde. Does what it says on the tin, it's far from mild. I even saw a chap once hallucinate that he was in a handbag as a child. For a similar effect, if you're planning a road trip, a dab of Chaucer inside your lip and it'll be like you've got company. You'll hear loads of voices talking funny. And for something just as effective but a little bit cheaper, what I have here is the open mic regular. 
Now this is one you can directly inject and it's hardly likely to show up in a test. So, what do you want for your next fix? Don't worry, with these you can pick and mix. Basically, all of this can take you on an unbelievable trip with no sweating, no gurning, there might even be some learning. Sure, it might make your brain swell, but that's from all the extra grey cells. So, do you want to buy some poetry? It might just make you see the world differently. Upon my head grows memory hair, and where I stem grows fungi. So I walk in a circle, lenium bud out, crisp, white, and spun. And slowly while the ancient world comes stone A stone circle will profound and amplify In mystic and power Because they somehow echo the moonsaw line in my own dreaming track, I backtrack to the spot where tracing the old mushroom road I laid long before. But I was younger, the rainbow cloak, and the antlers branched out, smothered in leaves of amber. Because of age, I become bold. I've lost my memory hair Becoming weary in my travels I ghost in younger orange remains Becoming useless and lost Until 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 Legacy. Each summer, your mother's hands transformed heaped bowls of ripe fruit into glistening fillings. Her deft persuasion of dough into pastry through the white, silted air. Rhubarb, blueberry, peach, apple. Desserts for a year's worth of holidays. I tried to make pie the way I tried to be your wife. Four Pyrex pie plates. A battle to bind flour, fat, and water into elusive tenderness. You gave me a yearning for homemade pie that lingered longer than love. Then left with the pie plates. And what you learned. Kanji breakfasts, the intricate textures of dim sum, how to eat shark's fin with a spoonful of vinegar, never to forgo the good luck of red bean soup, 
and always to rest your chopsticks parallel across the bowl at a meal's end. When the weatherman forecast hot sunny spells all aboard the 22 from Tunbridge Wells in the days when trains not always ran on electric rails British rail carriages filled with diesel smells down towards Hastings through Kent's valleys and bells past oast houses, hops and windmill cells the scenery evoking my childhood tells of days by the sea me drawing on shells Luck always seems to be on my side second class ticket, first class ride if the ticket inspector asked I'd get teary eyed Offer him tea out my flask and say my pet had just died. For all her airs and graces and sense of pride, Nan taught me this trick like me cheeky inside. In between swimming and beach picnics, I was at work with my pencils and graphite sticks. A master of scrimshaw, I could hear the clicks of my friend Paul Grimshaw's camera taking pics. Paul up to his latest photographic tricks, me deciding what scene my next shell depicts. 
Grandad once told me he fought in the war in France, based at an air camp somewhere north of Nantes. On the day that he told me, I guess it was happenstance, I could see Calais from where I was drawing with just the slightest glance. He told me you can always see over the channel, but I think that's just chance. That's how I remember my granddad alongside his garden and plants. And day trips to Eastbourne, part of a dream he was chasing. Me being there with my nan and my granddad, nan calling the sea air bracing. A world away from promenade boy racing, chaps fighting hard for car park spacing. With their cans of spray paint graffiti defacing, the posters lining the seafront now all in need of replacing. Fairground carpets that used to fly, roller coaster trains once speeding by, rides that threw me up in the sky, then back down to earth but still feeling high. Peer telescope eye on a guy that hunk in trunks, my oh my. I realised here it is men I desired, me revealing I'm queer, something Paul said he admired. That's why my love of the seaside has never expired, never losing its sparkle despite looking tired. Stuck in nostalgia for the semi-retired, its ghosts of the past keep my cylinders fired. Today I'm still drawing on seashells, alone but inspired. This is what happened. We made a small person out of mud and placed it down there on the table. Just like the gods, heart of sky, we rolled up our sleeves, heart of sea, to get our hands dirty in the stuff of life. But something went wrong. Its neck wouldn't turn. It just stared up at us, a tiny face with no understanding, a barely pulsating thing. I couldn't think. Like an overcooked vegetable, sodden, mushy, and disfigured. It couldn't worship. A sort of primal gurgle of lamentation and it dissolved in hot droplets into nothing. There's an old joke about the car made out of wood. Wooden engine and dashboard. Wooden wheels. The only problem? It wouldn't start. There's something similar here. You see... We are sustained by language. We are remembered by tongue, are chiselled, framed and shaped in the mouths of our peers. And so we did it again, and made a little person, a wooden effigy, and gave it some words. She crawled briefly before stopping, spoke eloquently, until her face dried up into a kind of expressionless, desiccated mask. Her arms and legs turned stiff. An unresponsive little body, rigid and cold. No blood flowed within, no oil or sweat. We remembered stories of similar cases. Effigy corpses left to be devoured, mouths and faces ruined and crushed, twig bones snapped, ground up for the dogs. And so we kissed her goodbye and submerged the crumbling husk in an organic and fragrant resin before burning. We inhaled the smoke 
smeared the ashes on our arms and chests as the whole of the earth darkened in a thick black rain. And that was that. To remind me of our little wood girl experiment, I keep a single splinter ingrained, a speck I carry with me in the palm of my hand. Ah, my darling wife, we've never been gods. Can't make corn into anything but food. So it took us a fourth attempt. No, I'll not mention the third. For the expected shock. A flush of rose water in the middle of breakfast. We wove our wildflowers into a sun. A filigree of bog cotton, mouse ear, may weed, bed straw, bitter crest dampened with sea foam, eye bright and yarrow, strengthened with dried strips of hennigan. And he was born, and lived, and grew. That was the year we drove into the commune in Cornwall. Jesus, Jim, Mam said. Back up quick. They're hippies. Through the car window, tents, row after row, flaps open. Long-haired men and women curled around each other like babies. And the babies themselves wandered naked across the grass. I reached for the handle, ready, almost, to open the door, drop out and away from my sister's aggressive legs, daddy's slapping hands. Back home in the dandelion market, I tried to unlearn the dance steps my mother taught. Bought a headband, an Afghan coat, a fringed skirt. Barefoot, on common grass, I lay down with kin.
The city is a distorted limb that didn't grow this way. Crepe paper twisted, steel softened to licorice. I never got to ask you, do hairs hide when bombs fall? When bayonets are thrust against the wind, does the air remember the sharp trace of steel? What is war when you're not a human thing? Where do you bivouac when the grass is on fire? When you cry at every sunset, bow to each sunrise, breathe with this city, feel each movement, flinch even at a whisper of silence. No reels, no jigs, not the beat of Bauron, nothing but a soft thrum rising. A Ros Lavette's violin concerto. It is in this symphony we forget. You left an impression on this earth. It is there, in the shadow of the Rowan. It is where the hare sits. There is a scratch on the inside of my right knee. It's been there for five weeks now, which probably indicates I could do with taking some zinc to help the healing. The zip on my left black knee-high leather boot is to blame, having sliced the skin as I uncrossed and recrossed my legs. I was sitting on a couch with you at the time. You had suggested we go out for a drink at my favourite place, tucked above Courtney Place with candlelight and dark walls, and we'd sunk into the depths of the couch and each other. I remember the moment of zip and skin making contact, glancing down to see drops of blood pushing themselves out into the world along the inside of my knee. I turned back to you rather than dealing with my broken skin, mentally blowing on my knee to soothe it. We stayed on that couch for two hours, talking about movies and music and other small details of our lives. How our week had been, the years it's taken you to rebuild your car, our travels, how I got my scars, our worst dates. And sometimes we sat in silence, and it was easy. Somewhere in getting to know you better, I found I liked the easiness of our talking, the loosening of my shyness, the quiet comfort of our physical closeness. How our laughter was loud and unforced and frequent. I found I liked you more than I would have imagined, and not just in a friend's way. Afterwards, you walked me back to my car, which was unexpected and lovely. I wondered if maybe the universe would be kind to me, and you might feel the same. It wasn't. And you don't. Instead, I am left with a slowly healing scratch on the inside of my right knee.
Sitting alone at the bar in Kilburn, mid-afternoon, on a midsummer's day, wearing a suit stained with blood, sweat and booze, drinking the last of this month's rent. He took the boat in 57, leaving behind Mayo, full of hope and fear, and a dress in his pocket for a ganger and a start. Money for a week to tide him over, Sunday best on his back, new shoes squeezing his feet. No Irish need apply, lodgings hard found, working every hour God sent, paid in the crown at the weekend, Missing home, laughs to hide the pain. Another from the top shelf. Saving for the summer holiday, putting a little by. Back home for a week to the old sod, buying pints for the lads. Bragging about the wages, gold chains around the neck, brought from a suitcase. When did you get home? When are you going back? Back to back breaking and blighty. Years passing on, body getting tired, drink taking hold. No money for the holidays or the funerals at home. Nights in the Doss house sleeping on the rope, days in the streets, dreams of a long gone family, passing away in the cold. Sometimes a dim yellow leaks out through the trapdoor. It smells of old roses. Sometimes there are notes, 
clear as icicles, clinking on this keyboard, plucking at this scalp. Sometimes an accompanying scrape, scrape, scrape on the inside of my ribs, playing me like an out of tune violin. Sometimes the yellow bulges like honey. Sometimes it cuts the sleeping air like a hunter's knife. I write lists, sketch layouts, make plans for renovation, but no activity muzzles the colour or the sounds or the words that come through sometimes. The clear, high solo of you. Against a chorus of all my containment strategies, now and then. All those failures of kindness 